You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for blackberry lily, Bellum canda chinensis. Blackberry lily is native to Central Asia, India, China, and Japan. It has been introduced to North America and is now naturalized throughout the central and eastern portions of the United States. This is a plant which enjoys lots of sunlight and is not too fussy about the type of soil in which it grows. In fact, you can often find it spreading down sunny embankments. Each summer, a mature blackberry lily plant grows a flower stalk. The closely arranged flowers of the inflorescence appear at the top of the flower stalk. As the process continues, the flower stalk gets taller, the individual flower buds expand upward along the stalk, and more flower buds reveal themselves, both within that inflorescence, or group of flowers, and from a second or third inflorescence. Gradually, the entire top of the plant becomes a mass of flower buds spread out along a multi-branched set of stems. The outermost flower buds develop first. Each of these flower buds contain two distinct parts, the petals and the ovary. This type of ovary is referred to as inferior, which means below the petals. Here we can see flower buds in several stages of development. On the right is a young bud. On the left, the petals are swelling and preparing to unfurl. The golden orange petals begin to expand and open out. Now we can see the deeper orange color with darker spots. And we can also see the stamens peeking out along with the stigma, the top of the flower's pistil. This image shows three flowers opening at the same time. Each flower is rather small, about one and a half inches across. Here's another botanical term for you, tepals. With the blackberry lily, as with most lilies, there are six tepals. Frequently, it is difficult to tell the difference between the three sepals and the three petals of a lily, so instead they are referred to as six tepals. Notice how the orange tepals are spotted with red. In this side view of the blackberry lily flower, we can see the green inferior ovary below the tepals. After the flower blooms for one day, it closes up with its tepals creating a spiral. Here are some photos showing different flowers as they gradually create and tighten their spiral. This flower's top portion becomes a spiral while other flowers are developing within the inflorescence. This leftmost spiral is younger as it is still winding itself tighter. The rightmost spiral is older you can also see that the ovary for each of these flowers is of a different size, with the older one looking a bit fatter. Eventually, the spiral turns brown, as these two flower spirals are doing, while a fresh flower blooms in the center. Let's return to a newly opening blackberry lily flower. In the center are three stamens and one pistil. The three anthers on the stamens begin to release pollen. The nearby pistil has a flared and receptive stigma at the top. In this view from above, the stamens are curling over the pistil stigma in the center. The anthers become thinner as they release pollen. Here, the anthers are spent and begin to shrivel. Even the style and stigma portion of the pistil are just starting to shrivel. Observe the healthy looking green ovary. Now, let's move to a view of the blackberry lily's leaves. They are broad along one dimension and thin along another dimension, with pointed tips, rather like a sword. Leaves arise alternately, in two ranks or vertical rows, from the central axis of the plant, a left rank and a right rank or vertical row. The overlapping ranked leaves are referred to as an equitant leaf arrangement. Blackberry lily develops a strong central stem to support its leaves. 
The flower stalk grows from the center and top of this equitant leaf arrangement. Let's go back and pick up where we left off with the dying flowers making their spirals. The spirals turn brown while the ovary grows the new seeds. The green seed capsule swells as the seeds develop. Sometimes fertilization does not occur. That's why we see these little flower stalks with nothing at the ends. The unsuccessful ovary dropped off the plant. As summer weeks go by, more of the blackberry lily flowers bloom, are fertilized, and die. The plants become covered with green seed capsules. When the seeds are nearly mature, the capsules change color and exhibit three distinct ridged sections. The group of blackberry lilies are covered with lighter green seed capsules. In the next phase, the seed capsules begin to dry out and turn brown. When the seed capsule becomes dry, it splits open to reveal its seeds in three sections of the capsule. Here's a close view of an opening seed capsule with its striking black seeds. The dried spiral of tepals may remain attached to the tip of the seed capsule. The seed capsule's papery covering pulls away and drops downwards from the seeds. The shiny black seeds remain attached to a central spike of the seed capsule, which has a sharply pointed tip. Eventually, some of the fleshy seeds develop wrinkles. The blackberry lily is now covered with seed capsules in varying stages of maturity. There's that persistent twisted spiral of tepals. Moving into the fall season, the group of plants displays a mass of split open seed capsules. It's easy to see why this plant's common name refers to the blackberry. More of the seeds become wrinkled. Seeds start dropping to the ground. And the seed capsule coverings break up. Moving back to the summer season, I wanted to point out how the blackberry lily exhibits multiple growth phases during any given summer day. You might see fresh flowers that day, along with twists of dead tepals, along with ovaries becoming seed capsules. The varying growth phases happen with an entire group of blackberry lilies. Let's look at the stem. It's smooth, firm, and a light green color. The top portions of the flower stalks are light green to yellow. While the seed capsules are doing their developmental work, the flower stalks turn more yellow and even begin turning brown. Later in the fall season, the lower leaves turn brown, shrivel and pull back from the central axis. Here we can see the strong stem, which supports the three foot high plant. Also, notice the smaller blackberry lilies growing to the left and right. These have possibly sprouted from the rhizome of the larger plant. One of blackberry lilies' methods of reproduction is its rhizome, which remains from year to year. New plants sprout from that rhizome. Another method of reproduction is the shiny black seed. If you pull up a young plant, you will see it still has the black seed casing at the base of the plant. Fine roots grow around the original seed. The massive amount of heavy plant material, both from the leaves and the branch stalks with the loaded seed capsules, cause the plant to tip and lean toward the ground. This sets the stage for seeds to be dropped in clusters around the original plant. And for large numbers of young plants, to sprout close together. Here we have a group of blackberry lily plants in the fall covered with seed clusters. The plant's leaves begin to turn yellow at their tips, then brown, until all the leaves are dead and falling toward the ground. The seeds persist through the winter, through snow and wind until spring, when they will finally be released to the ground to create the dozens of new plants for the new year. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Bellum canda chinensis, also known as blackberry lily. 
visit identifythatplant.com for more images of blackberry lily for plant identification resources and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.